This is an overview of the Nikon AF 70-300mm telephoto lens. OK, so here it is. Let me first point out that this is the standard 70-300mm uh, to lens. It's not the VR version, so there's no um, image stabilisation with this lens. In terms of the lens itself, there's really not that much to it. Um, you've got your standard readings across the barrel. There are no uh, buttons at all with this lens, so there's no autofocus, manual focus switch. That can be found on the digital camera rather than on, rather than on the lens body. Uh, the weight of the lens is 480 grams, so it's, it's pretty light. It's lighter than some of its competitors at the same focal range. The, it's the standard aperture range of f4 to 5.6 all the way up to f32, and it has a 1.5 meter minimum focusing distance. And here's the lens attached to a Nikon D80 digital camera. Uh, when fully zoomed into 300mm, the bow of the lens extends this far. It's slightly smaller than some of the competitive lenses at the same focal range, such as the Sigma and the Tamron 70-300. It might fit slightly better in your kit bag. Um, the difference is pretty negligible, but it is slightly smaller. In terms of focusing, it is similar as well to the Sigma and the Tamron in terms of the noise that the, fo the lens makes and also uh, how quickly it takes to focus in. Pretty similar. Um, in terms of uh, zooming from 70 to 300 mil, the bow of the lens feels very smooth. It's not too heavy or too light to the touch. There's also no detectable lens creep with this lens. OK, so here are some example photographs taken with the 70 300 on the Nikon D80. Uh, they're typically pretty sharp and clear. Uh, they're high in saturation as well, they're pretty colourful. Um, I had the Nikon D80 set to its standard settings, uh, like automatic white balance for example. Um, the pictures are coming out with a slight greeny blue tinge to them, uh, but overall they are pretty sharp. Um, when zoomed in between 200 and 300 mil, uh, the pictures are slightly softer in focus. Uh, this is more noticeable uh, when you're using a larger aperture. Um, I've taken very similar photographs with also the Sigma and the Tamron lenses, so if you check out the other reviews you'll be able to compare and contrast uh, the image quality between the lenses. If you want to see the full res versions of these pictures you can find them on my website. So I thought I'd point out a couple of alternative lenses. Uh, these are all 70 to 300 mil, and they're all based or fit within the budget range of, tele of telephoto photography. This is the Nikon that I've been talking about already. Uh, the one in the middle here is the Tamron 70 to 300, and this one is the Sigma 70 to 300. And Tamron and Sigma also make lenses to fit Nikon cameras. Um, the Nikon is slightly smaller than the other two but the other two have a macro function which the Nikon doesn't. Uh, the closest you can focus in on with the Nikon is 1.5 meters. In terms of image quality, they're all pretty much the same. Um, you can actually check out uh, the photographs taken with all these three lenses if you check out the, my other videos or if you go onto my website you can see the full res versions of these pictures. My own opinion, I think probably the Sigma and the Nikon are slightly superior in image quality to the Tamron, but it's very, very close, and I think it's best if you check out the pictures yourself to make your own decision. In terms of price, though, the Nikon is the cheapest of the three here. Uh, brand new, you could probably buy it for, say, around about £100, and second-hand or refurbished probably from, say, £50 to £60 upwards. Uh, the Tamron and the Sigma are v both very similar in price and brand new they're probably between 115 and 130 pounds, maybe a bit more, and second hand maybe 65 to 70 pounds upwards. So that's it, that's the Nikon 70 to 300. It's a really good lens, it takes good quality photographs, it doesn't cost much money, I mean 100 pounds or maybe less if you buy it second hand. The image quality is pretty good. Um, it's not going to take the best quality photographs, particularly at the higher ranges, say 200 mil and up. But if you do want to have really good quality images at, at that range, you're going to probably have to buy, say, the Nikon 80 to 400 mil. 
Um, if you want to have a lens with image stabilization, you can get the VR version of this lens, but that's going to be more expensive. That's going to probably cost you maybe £350 or more. But if you want a cheap telephoto lens, this is a really good one to go for. I hope you've enjoyed this review, and if you'd like to check out any more uh, reviews, go to my YouTube channel, which is SLR Lens. Thanks.